the, the, the way you both are, ask questions there, he has a vital role with possession, but also out of possession as well in this team. Dave, he, say, he said a word that I, I, used to, I used to love and I understood that at Barcelona because we were kind of playing, not kind, we were playing the same way. What was impressive for me when I was at Barcelona is the way we used to recover the ball and how we put pressure. But I wanted to know that I was safe to go. He, he used the exact same word because when you go and put pressure, you don't want to do this. Are they following me? Are they following me? He's not looking. You're not looking. You're going there. You feel safe. And that word came back. And that's why he's going, because he's not looking. Like, um, shall I go? Shall I not go? In the Premier League, shall I go? Shall I not go? They're gone. And they're feeling safe. And you can, you can see that, that, that uh, when, when they are playing and putting pressure. It was certainly effective tonight, Jamie. When they did get the ball, they were so dangerous and caused Sheffield United so many problems from wide areas. Yeah, they did. And listen, I mean... The first sort of five minutes of the game, you just you couldn't believe how dominant Arsenal were. Uh, I mean, there's so much to sort of enjoy when you're watching Arsenal playing with the ball, and obviously they almost score here. And just little themes that we've actually touched on tonight. I think Thierry done a brilliant, and when he was actually talking about Manchester City being compact as a team, and you'd actually look where you know, look at Silly, but he's high, mm. and then you look where Gabriel is. Mm. So we're talking about teams, and, and of course, Mikel Arteta is you know, a, a disciple of Pep Guardiola, that's where he's really been influenced, but that compactness when you've got the ball and the days of centre-backs watching the team play at this end of the pitch and the two centre-backs being on the halfway line, mm. I can't even get it in shot. Them days are gone. <coughs> Them days are finished. This now, if you want to be a top centre-back and play for a top team, you're going to dominate possession. Your centre-backs are going to end up having to be 30 yards from goal, as we saw at the weekend at Manchester City and we actually see here, Thierry. But we all know who's, who's winning that race. Yeah. So, you're safe. Yeah, you said, didn't it's, you? It's, you it's a 1v1. One one. Like, who's winning that race? We all know who's winning that race. So, you can go. You can send a, a, another man forward and, and attack what I thought. And I know, and I feel sorry for Wilder, and, and, and I know it's not easy, but this is what happens when you play in a back four against a team. Like Arsenal. You're going to end up with what I call... You're going to uh, now have to always chase a man. Hey, you're going to end up chasing a man all the time. And then, and then if you roll it at that particular moment, anything can happen. It's a goal. And this is why he went after, what, 15 minutes? The first one? No, I'm uh, ch changing into oh, a yes, back five. after 3-0. Yeah. It was a bit late by then. No, I know, but a team like Arsenal can, as we saw, open you up at will if your back four is not well drilled. It's, 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 it's a tough one, yeah. and they, they enjoyed it for a little while, and so, after even. Yes, yeah, so as we were saying, 3-0 down after 15 minutes, and that with the four before they actually made the change, that tactical change. So let's have a look at the, um, the second and third goals. Bogle gets unlucky, but again, it's about this cutback, isn't it, which is such a problem. Yeah, I mean, it, it is. It's so sort of Manchester City-like, and here he's right. I mean, I've said for a very long time about sort of getting in position to sort of stop cutbacks is very difficult. But the thing that really stood out for you, Thierry, was actually going on the outside. Yes. Because we don't see it now because yes. wingers like to come inside on the stronger foot. Yes, and, and this is what Bukayo Saka brought to his game now because people, as you can see, if you, if you show the replay again, the Sheffield United player, it doesn't matter, went on the out, out inside to wait for him. Well, he went on the outside. And, and I think you need to beat, to beat your player on the outside. And then, obviously, we all know what happened after that. They go on the counter now. Ball arrives to Declan Rice, reverse it to Martinelli, and also on top of everything, the ball is deflected in. Yeah, I mean, exactly what you, what, you, yeah, what, what you don't want. Um, I think it's who reverse it. It wasn't yeah, it was Declan Rice, I think. But this is a night. This is a night when when players are looking to boost their own confidence. As yeah, well, and what we've got to remember is since Havertz come back into the, the team, it hasn't all been about him getting goals. He gets his goal tonight, but Arsenal have started scoring a lot of goals since mm -hmm. sort of Jesus has gone out the team, mm -hmm. and yeah. you know, almost like playing without a striker in a certain sense. In some ways, would you say that theory? Yeah, like I would say a well organised striker. But it doesn't matter. Mm. As I, I, I said so many times, and, and, and maybe mentioning Kane is not the best example, but goals don't show you titles, do they? You know, 
Man City showed us that with a Gundogan scoring 18 to 17, with a Kevin De Bruyne scoring 16 to 17, you don't need to have a striker that, that's going to score you a lot of goals. You need to have a lot of players that's going to pass maybe 10 to 11 to 12. Then you're good. When you are a team in possession, when you are a team in possession. So, I, like again, I'm going to go back to the same thing. They, 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 those teams for me right now, uh, um, Arsenal, Man City, they defy logic. Because at one point you're like, if you don't have a striker back in the day that scored you maybe a 20, you might not win the league, you might not. Because when you have one also that can score you 30, you don't also win the league at times. But that, that was our analysis, I think, at the start of the season when they were struggling to score goals. We knew they didn't have a, a Salah mm -hmm. or a Haaland. Mm -hmm. But what we were saying, people like Saka, Martinelli, Odegaard, they were nowhere near the numbers they were getting last season, which were, they were huh? all getting around about 15. And that's OK if you're getting four or five players around that number. But now as the season's going, it looks like they're going to get, get, get those of those numbers. And people like Declan Rice chipping in it as oh. well. He was desperate to get his goal tonight, wasn't <laughs> he? He was. <laughs> he was. <laughs> he was. But, but look, this is what he can do. He but, can add this to his yeah, game. Yeah, just highlight like, That's yeah. the position that he takes. I mean, people were talking about, and I know I'm going to go from last season, but, OK, Chaka last season. Oh, he's better. No, he's not better. He plays in a different position, so you cannot see his weaknesses where he used to lose the ball more often than not. Declan Rice, we all know that he's magnificent there. But he's playing higher than he ever played in his career. So, obviously, he's at the end of movement to give assists and to score goals. Look at him. The run he made against, uh, you know, the header against Luton when he, when he goes into the box. Makes look at his move, run. look, he wants the ball. He's there, he's allowed because he has Jorginho under making, making, making. Now he's the, making another yes. one. <laughs> yes, he's making another, another run and he wants that ball. And what a finish, by the way, after, after when that ball bounces like that to keep it low and score. That's, 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 that's well done. I, I'm, I'm delighted Declan Rice is getting goals because I've always been a big admirer of Declan Rice. And it's easy to say that because you can be an admirer of him because he's a top player. There's, there's no doubt about that. But there used to be criticism of him in that he can't be a great midfield player because he doesn't score enough goals. Now, my argument was, and I came on this show, I, okay, we analysed this at the start of the season, and again, my point was, he's play, if he's playing sitting midfield role, as we saw in some of the teams you played in, great teams, you'd have maybe Emmanuel Petit, great midfield player, Vieira, great midfield player, they would get five goals a season. And we would never question it because they're a midfield player. So you can't have a goal with Declan Rice for not scoring enough goals if he played number one at West Ham in, in, a, in a team who, who sort of like to counter attack and sit in. Always going to be difficult. He then comes to Arsenal. He's at the base of a midfield three. So his job is to sit there. So I, I didn't understand the criticism, but I always felt he had the ability to do that. And so did his manager. And then we're seeing it now at times when he's playing in, in the high eight, high, high position. He... His passing is very underrated, and hopefully, as time goes on, we'll be talking about his goal-scoring ability being underrated as well. You know, you know, is the best example with that, and you, you just remind me of that right now when you were talking. Is Ira Touré? For a long time at Barcelona, he had to cover Iniesta and Xavi. That was his mm -hmm. job, so he didn't come with a lot of goals and a lot of assists and, and what we saw of him. At City, he played higher, and suddenly then the goals came. The goals Declan Rice and he, always yeah. talked about Same. him being an example for him. He's now got five goals, five assists, the best in both uh, categories of his career. And there's still loads of this season to go. Uh, could you argue, actually, the sixth goal, the only one that came in the second half, was best of the night, certainly best strike? Mm -hmm. I mean, listen, if, uh, if Ben White is scoring a goal like, like that, <laughs> you know we're having a good night. <laughs> you know we're having a good night. Even, I mean, the goalkeeper touches it, but it's not enough. But, hey, what... A strike with your left foot and he, he actually caught it so well and when you see the celebration of everybody everybody's almost like wow <laughs> Ben White also scored I'm not saying he never scored before that's not that's not the case but I'm just saying when you know that you know Ben White scores a goal like that and I think it's what how many goals for, uh, uh, for 10,000 yes exactly. so that'd be the, the pub quiz question yes, if so you, you need to remember that one. Ben White exactly not Thierry not Ian Wright yeah, that, that's for sure <laughs> Ben White <laughs> He's going to be happy tonight, isn't he? The first team to win seven in a row um, this season. Not even Manchester City have done that yet. There's still time, of course. And for the first time, uh, for the second time, we've got three teams on 60 points or more at this stage of a Premier League season. It's great, isn't it? And we hope it lasts, well, 
I hope it lasts <laughs> <laughs> right towards the end of the season. So we've colour coded this uh, remaining fixtures chart. So we've got red is a top six opponent, yellow for seventh to 14th and the green is bottom six. So as you can see, Manchester City have got three big games on the horizon. Uh, Mikel Arteta himself can't see past the next game, which is Brentford. Um, That's the way. Yeah, but that, that Manchester City game is looming large, isn't it? Could that be the one that decides Arsenal's fate in this title race, do you think, Thierry? A way, uh, I've been waiting for us to go there and, and, and put a, a good performance. But it's not easy to go to, to the ATIAD and do that. So th th those, that, that's a defeat. I'm not saying we will lose. I'm just saying that if you lose at City, it's not the end of the world, isn't it? But right now, especially the way that the, the, the league looks right now, you, you just don't want to go there and, and, and get outplayed. But I, I'm focusing, I'm like Mikel, I'm focusing on Brentford. Last year it was a tough game. Uh, it was like that uh, offside goal or a foul or whatever it was. Finish 1-1. Finish 1 1. So let's focus on the Brentford and see what we can do. Then, then Porto is coming. There's a lot of things on the way. Yeah, I mean, listen, I know we've got the, the opt-out uh, predictor there and it's got Arsenal at 14%. I think the form Arsenal are looking at the fixtures as well. I feel like there's, a, <laughs> there's more than 14% chance of Arsenal winning the title. I actually think playing City there is, prob is possibly the best time to play them in that City look out of this world yesterday. They've got Liverpool next week. It'll be a tough game for Liverpool. But on the back of an international break, it always feels a little bit... You know, you've got to get back into it. You've had two or three days training. Everyone's been away. And whether Man City may not be in the rhythm that we saw yesterday, I, I think that's possibly... If you're going to play them at any time between the running, you, it you, might be the best You have Arsenal best solving one. the same problem. No, I, because, I know. But wait, it, yeah. well, they but have a cup game, so they've had a longer break than City going into that. Yeah, but coming back from international duty, I'm saying Arsenal would have a lot of players going and Man City. Yeah. Go on, who do you think? There's a lot of football to be played. <laughs> Look, uh, we all know like, my, where my heart will go. I want Arsenal to win the league, but I still City is the team to beat. Yeah. I think Liverpool and Arsenal have got to, they have got to look at the game. I think even if you're Liverpool, you might say if, if Liverpool drew against Manchester City, they'd still be above them. But I we just might all be saying something different after this Sunday. No, that's me. What I'm saying is, I think Liverpool would. If for Liverpool, if I'm putting Liverpool's case across, I would think they would need to beat City to have that four-point buffer. Then when you look at games away at United, away at Everton, that, you know, there are derby games for Liverpool, which will always be tough games, no matter how poor those two teams are having this season. They will be tough games for Liverpool. Yeah, we've got uh, Arsenal-Brentford on Saturday night and we've got uh, the big game at Anfield on Super Sunday. You can watch them both Ooh. with us. <laughs> it's getting more tense by the week. Ooh. Yeah, another really bruisy night this for Sheffield United. Just 13 points to show from their 27 games so far. They've conceded 72, the most at this stage. Uh, in Premier League history, which gives them a goal difference right now of minus 50. He sounds like he's um, pretty much resigned to their fate. And he sort of um, maybe hinted that it's, it's worth looking at the younger players between now and the end of the season. Might that be some way of salvaging a positive if they do head back to the Championship? If they do well, and they're worried for any, any manager putting on anyone, a young player going into it, you know, an experience like that, with not much help, not much real quality, around them, uh, that these type of performances and results will happen to young players and the effect that it can have on them. So, yes, give them a go, but it, it's not easy. And listen, whatever Sheffield United decide to do or Chris Wilder decides to do, he's going to be sat on that bench, terrified he's going to have more games like that. Uh, I mean, you actually look at Sheffield United and in some ways they almost had a better team last season in the Championship. Now, we can talk about Chris Wilder, we can talk about the players, but you can also look at the ownership as well, what happened there, certainly in the summer, losing, I think, two of the best players, selling them on as well. So they were just not equipped for the Premier League. And I was very critical of the half-time, I think rightly so, because I don't think any team, whether you're in the Premier League or if Arsenal were playing an FA Cup tight away from home against a team from League Two or the Conference, I wouldn't expect Arsenal to be up 5-0 up at half-time 
even a team at that level. So that's not acceptable in the Premier League. But yes, as I said, they're not equipped for the Premier League. And if I'm being honest, I think Luton have been absolutely fantastic this season because I feared that Luton would be doing exactly what Sheffield United and Burnley are doing. And it almost felt like for the majority of the season that we've had three championship clubs in the Premier League and the Championship's got three Premier League clubs. And I think those three clubs will probably come back and the East three will probably go d down. But credit to Luton. I think they've been absolutely fantastic and they're going to make a right fist of it. Just an extraordinary goal scorer and a uh, scorer of extraordinary goals as well. And all different types of goals, Thierry. The dribbles, the volleys, left and right foot and that trademark finish we were talking about earlier that we saw from Ollie Watkins this weekend. The, the left channel. That's, a, that's the, the, the first touch. I like it because there's no way the ball can leave your foot if you try to control it after the rebound. Whoop. Just put your foot in the position, caress it, and now trust your curve. But what, what, what's it like? I mean, anyone who scores a goal like that in the Premier League, it's just f forever it's going to be the Thierry on refinish. That, that's basically what it is. That's what it's going to be remembered. I, I mentioned it before. Hours hours, hours of repetition with the, with the third goalkeeper at Monaco. Every time. I, I, I bothered him after every training session to stay. And Did I, you score lots of goals this be, like this before you went to Arsenal? But this always your trade, man. Uh, yes, starting at Monaco. But I had to work a lot, Jamie. That almost looks like the one of, uh, of, uh, of Watkins. But this is my, one of my most difficult goals to execute. And people don't remember it, people don't care. It's difficult to execute that. This one against, uh, not this one, the one before against the castle. This one against Blackburn. I don't know why Brad Fiddle thinks I'm going to go first post. I'm never going to go first post. It's impossible. Mm. My body's not shaped to go first post anyway. Ball is in my feet. Oh, and this one here, that. very important. Whoop, that little touch to make it go on my right feet to be able to open. Slight little touch to be able to go. I, 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 was, I was lucky enough, and I know you're going to love, but I walk in a weird way. My left leg goes straight, my right leg comes like this. So I studied that when I was younger. This is how I stand. I was like, okay, the curving is my thing. Okay, but the goalkeepers ever trying, you know, we had Petr Cech on uh, a few weeks ago when he was talking about sort of different positions for different shots, but also would the goalkeeper take up a different position because of you? In terms of basically you're coming in on that right foot, did you ever, did I anything studied. ever change? I studied, this is what I said. I used to like to think about what I'm about to do. Goalkeepers, we always close that first post. So when you look at the picture, where is the space? Space is there. And believe it or not, when I was young, I wasn't good in 1v1. So I had to make sure that I was going to have something that's going to make me feel we go back to before safe in front of the net. Because the most difficult thing for a striker is when he has time. But I knew exactly what I was about to do. Obviously, I'm not stupid. You said about that Newcastle goal, Thierry. The yes. ball coming over the top, so I was a defender yes. there. You're, you're seeing the ball from over here. I always say to people that I like when, a, when I can see when a striker is about to do something and then he does it. A lot of strikers and a lot of people think about when the ball comes in their feet. I actually saw that, I think it was Hughes. Uh, uh, Hughes. Yeah, Aaron Hughes on me. When he came, I saw that the centre-back never followed him. As soon as I saw that, obviously I'm running, but the ball is over my head. So I said, if you overcome, I'm going to control the ball here. One Outs touch. Outside to of your boot. To, to go that way. With the so, outside of your boot, I mean, yes. what touch? Yes. It's here. Distance. This. Tense. You're dead. You don't know it yet. You're dead. It does now. <laughs> All I'm saying to you is, can you, while you're running, think, I'm looking, okay, if you overcome, I go. Because most of the time, you shield. You come, you turn. But there is always, this is what I'm saying, do you see the game with your eyes? Because eyes can be pretty deceiving. If you see the game with your brain, it's a different ball game. You start to imagine, oh, you make the mistake of, you don't think I can go in? Oh, what a mistake. I go in. Now it's me and my technique to be able to execute it. And I go back to what I said. Work is a talent too. You said before uh, about, you've got to see the goal before you score it. I like that, yeah. At times, it's instinct, all right? It's you, you, you finish. But not a lot of strikers can tell you exactly what they've done or the path of it up because they didn't think about it. It was instinct. Do you think about it? You thought about it. You're not going to tell a story because you're going to remember it. You don't remember lies. You don't remember stuff that you never thought of. 
So you will remember, I can explain most of my goals. So when you're going through on that right side, you, before you, you make the action, before you open your body up, you're actually almost picturing the goal. How are you going to score it before you score it? Is that what you're saying? Yes, because I always say to people that situations and the best camera that you have is your brain. So when you repeat and you arrive in this type of situation, because you've done it times and times and times and times again in training, in the, I always used to try to train in training with impossible angles. Because suddenly when you have an angle, it's, it's supposed to be better. But when you arrive in that spot, heart rate is very important. You are in your zone at that moment. Now it's you and your technique. But I didn't have that in me, that killer instinct, right from the start I'm talking about. I didn't have that cold. So I said, what's going to be my thing that I'm going to bring with me when I arrive there? I know what I'm doing. Do you recognise that in other players? I'm, we're going to look at Harry Kane. But do, you, do you see in him someone that, you're talking about that heart rate slowing down and becoming yes. really cool yes. in that situation when he's in the box? The evolution of Harry Kane has been outstanding. This is why when I mentioned that, that goals at times don't I show you to win titles, but it doesn't matter. Look at how calm he is. He knows, look, boom, little flick. It's, it's, it, everything that he does is, is calm. And I know in that game, I think the team was playing with nine, nine, it doesn't matter. He's composed, he sees, can I have the technique? Yes, I have the technique. And you can name any goal. This guy can score any goal, any pass, coming in midfield and play. He's already gone. Can I see? Yes, obviously that's an easy one, he knows. More often than not, he goes across, and we all know he likes also the one shift, open your leg, go in. German de Foyle used to like to do that one also. He can score on that also, but that, this one. Calm. Boom. Curve it. There's, there's about, I've heard you speak about Harry Kane before, and you're speaking about him now. And listen, he's, he's had a, a brilliant season. This Bayern Munich have had a poor season. And you actually think where he would be without really? his goals right now. But, you know, we've seen very few players in the past maybe go on and have great seasons when they've gone abroad, certainly in the first season. But I wanted to ask you something yeah. I was going to ask you earlier. You scored a lot of goals. Harry Kane scored a lot of goals. But you don't seem obsessed with goals, but you seem to no. have an obsession with creating and having an assist alongside your name. But what I want to ask you is, is that why you've got so much respect and you speak so well about Harry Kane? Because yes. it's not just about the goals for him. I, I, I will, I will uh, when I used to work for Sky, I went to see Harry Kane. And, Still do, don't you? Well, tonight, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> see? Uh, no, but when I went to see Harry Kane at the, at, the, at the Spurs training ground, I said to him, do you want to add assists to your, to your game? He said, to be honest, I'm not happy with, with my assists and I should do more. And you know what? I have respect for people that talk and back it up. And you can see, I mean, the way he plays is just... I mean, when you talk about complete striker, for me, I said it so many times, we're talking about com Patrick Clivert was complete as a striker. You played against him, we talked about him. I'm not saying he was the best striker in history, but complete striker, he could do it all. Kane can do it all. He can come in midfield, ping a ball to the winger, come, get the ball off the, 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 the holding midfielder, play through the lines. The only thing I will say, I always say to the big man, what about your free kicks? He can bend the ball and the free kicks are not He's there yet. He's got something on him, hasn't he? No, but... He's good at corners. <laughs> <laughs> no, but joking aside, I, I always have a lot of respect for strikers that also understand that an assist is important. This is why uh, when we were talking about Lee Watkins earlier, I went straight away to the 10, 10 assists. Because they are important in the game. Not a lot of players can score alone. You know, one, one of the guys that, you know, that I admire the most, one of the most that I admire in this league, I mean, so many, but Eden Hazard was just a joke. Like, you can take the ball from his house and, 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 and just arrive at, at, at the bridge and score, like, and running past everybody. I mean, tactic has nothing to do with that. It's, it's, it was a joy to watch. I mean, we can talk about other, mm. other guys like that, but when, w one, once you have that and you like to share, and the way Kane is playing right now, He's a complete striker and always Jamie, Jamie said that. about him having an, an amazing season and, and, you know, the impact that he's had in his first season as an English player abroad it is pretty extraordinary. 31 oh. goals in, in 32 games. And we've, we've got this list of others who've, um, you know, had a huge impact. Glenn Hoddle? Uh, Monaco? Oh, my gosh. He, he, like, he ran that show. It was outstanding, Glenn Hoddle. Oh. Kevin is Keegan it, I mean, won the Ballon d'Or. I mean, you look, you look at that, Thierry, and, and some great names here, what they've won, and maybe Harry Kane's going to end up at the top goal scorer. But in terms of individual performances, not necessarily the team, is he having one of the best seasons we've seen of an English player abroad here? 
Uh, if we talk about individual season, it's, it's, uh, you, you have to just look at the numbers. It's, it's not only way up there, look at appearances. This guy will come close to challenge him because coming as a 10 position and score 20 goals in your first season for Real Madrid, when you take the number five, the number of Zinedine Zidane and the level of expectation that Ari can add, but the age, Madrid, I'm not saying Bayern Munich is not a great team, but yes, yes, you, if you go to individual stats, this is outstanding. Okay, you, you've mentioned Bellingham there, and I, I'm, I'm thinking of this with But you look at the big men, so you have some big men here, though. I know. Oh. I mean, people forget Keegan, don't be Ballon d'Or, Keegan. Um, I mean, mean yeah. Steve McManaman won the Champions League, scored in the final. Yes, it's, um, we, we all remember how, how, how he scored that, you know. He had a good season. Yeah. He had a good season. Harry, Chris Ruddle was one of my favourites because yeah. at the time, the way he was playing for Marseille. Uh, was just magnificent. Uh, okay, better, better back, we better mention Gary Lineker as well. Yeah, 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 no, but I mean, should we go through the ball? <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, it's like everybody. <laughs> I'm trying to get to Bellingham here. <laughs> no, but you, you have to look. This is, look, this guy right now, I, I think, I, I don't know if I'm, yeah, t take a bow. And I'm not, I'm not a Real Madrid guy, we all know. But, the first time I saw him play, I think, for England, was it this first game against San Marino, if I'm not mistaken? I don't know. Whatever it was, but he wanted every single ball. Whenever I see him, he doesn't shy away. He wants, he wants the ball. And I think that the system, and this is why you have to give a lot of credit to managers, the system that Ancelotti put for him, 4-3-1-2, he answered the call. He answered I mean, the call. That's going to be your team with Vinicius Jr. He answered the call, so well done. How, how tough is that, a young man of anyone? OK, he's got great ability, we get that. This celebration actually makes me sort of love him even more. It's like, to go to Real Madrid at that age, the biggest club in the world, yeah. and when he scores, he's just almost, yeah, it's like, it's about me. It's, it, and it, almost that football arrogance. To go, you, you, to, you went to Juventus as a young player, you need one to. of the biggest clubs in, in, in Europe. He's gone to a similar club in Real Madrid. It's not even just the football ability, it's the mentality to have the... Look, I, I, is that I, almost what impresses you most about yeah, him? Yeah, I, I, I will always say to people, look, I, I had the opportunity to play in a lot, you know, I played in Italy, I played in France, you know, I went to the US, played in Spain. Um, uh, footballers have it easy in England. The pressure that you have to endure in Spain, this is what makes it even more special. You have a show every night about Real Madrid or Barcelona. Papers are six to seven, Mark and I, about Real Madrid. The pressure, the press, you know, how the expectation, you take number five of Zinedine Zidane, and when you celebrate, you're like this, oh, well done, mate. Will it, Mbappe, it, be able to, um, Mbappe be able to cope with that? It looks like he's gonna go there to Madrid. I don't know if he's gonna be, a, he has to. He has to, this is, this is when you add, I mean, who wouldn't like to have a player like that? I mean, it's in, it's, it's in the title, but I go back to clarify even more so, like I always say to people, the pressure when you play for Real Madrid or Barca, it's on the level level of everything that you can experience. Could he be the greatest experience. of them all though, Thierry? Sorry? Does he have the talent to be the greatest of them all? This what I mean, generation? I mean, the guy, when, when, the, when the guy goes to a World Cup, he goes to the final. He, plays two, he played two World Cup, he went to two finals. He's got a hat trick in the final. I mean, he's all, he already scored four goals in the final of World Cups. Is 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 uh, two? I mean, how long he's been playing? Like, I mean, it's just ridiculous. I mean, the sky is the limit for him. And and Madrid and Barca and big teams always manage. Well, let me not go too forward. He looks like he's going to go there. I don't. I don't want to be uh, talking about it. But those teams always manage to get players like that. Thierry, you mentioned, we were talking about Erlen Haaland earlier, yeah. and most people will look at Erlen Haaland and Mbappe, and it's almost like the, the Messi, uh, Ronaldo maybe debate mm -hmm. that we have over the next mm -hmm. four or five years. You mentioned in terms of Erlen Haaland where he could improve. I mean, you're talking about how good this guy is. What are the small things maybe he could improve? He, I think, at times, doesn't enjoy as much to play as a nine, especially long nine. If he plays with Giroud, or oh, Griezmann and uh, people like that in and around him is more at ease because he likes to run off and move. He's not the type of guy that will stay uh, there and, and, and not move. But we're talking about a guy that at any minute can unlock any situation and any defense. And, and do, do you, are you going to be like, it's like if I said to you, you you're not going to ask Alan Shearer to play as a winger. 
So sometimes you have wingers that don't enjoy too much to be too early back back to the back to the goal back to the goal because if you have that line, I will use that line. You know that nobody will attack you from here. Mm. You see the whole game. You feel a bit more secure. You can go. You see the you know when you come inside, you're on your right foot. You can pass. You can switch. Once you're here inside the field. And especially now, by the way, it's one striker against two centre-backs. Or it's one striker against three centre-backs. In my time, it was me against Demi and Dennis Bergkamp against whoever or Canu or whoever. Now, you always have one defender more against a striker. OK, so we're we're talking talking about, about great players and, yeah. and some of those that we should be thinking about moving forward. wanted to ask you as well, as someone who's moving more into a coaching career yeah. and uh, now, of course, with the France and the 21s, we, we talk with you a lot about Pep Guardiola, uh -huh. but are there any other coaches yeah. that you look at and maybe admire tactically? Inzaghi. Inzaghi. I've been following Inzaghi for a very long time, uh, since his Lazio day. And he was at one point known as a guy that, you know, if you meet him in the cup game, you're in trouble. As we saw Man City struggling against his Inter Milan and that 5-3-2. But you know what I like is Conte was a bit, you know, that 3-4-3 three, three, and, and having, having that nine coming and that ball coming. But what I like with Inzaghi is, and we were talking about it with Jamie, I like right now as a coach to play with two centre forwards. OK, we yeah, Terry, you, you show us. We, we set up the system of Inter Milan, Inzaghi. Is it the system you like or the fact that he's got two strikers? What is it about Inzaghi? What, what like? Like? OK, so let, let, let's, let's put it this way. If you are Arsenal or Man City, you have that ball so much that, as you mentioned, sometimes it's a 3-7. Declan Rice can go. But if you're not in position as much, transition will happen. And especially if you play against a team that play with Vegas iron wide, it's becoming really tough. And I like the way the five, three, two looks. Especially if we take Inter Milan, if we take Inter Milan and you have Barella, Chalanoglu and Mkhitaryan, you have guys that can be three sixes, but when you're on the ball, they're good enough to play. Then you have Lautaro Martinez that will come and Marcus Thuram that run into the channel when DeMarco doesn't do it, or Dumfries or Darmian, it depends, doesn't do it. And you can, you can have a look, they scored two goals like that against Juve away from home and Milan at home where Marcus Thuram goes on his back and then you have a striker already there. If you play a 5-4-1 or uh, like a lot of teams likes to play without being in position with one striker and wingers are in wide, when you hit that ball to the striker, you can only hold it. So Thierry, you, played, you played with... Yeah, go on. No, I was just going to say that. Is it the actual system that you like or the way Inzaghi employs it? The way Inzaghi employs it because he will put pressure on goal kicks. Other than that, this is, this is their shape. He goes low block. The two, obviously, we don't have the team here, but the two strikers will have an impact on their two old midfielders or the opposite team. Dumfries or whoever will come and meet the fullback, the wing back or the winger early, you shuffle across. And then if they ever get that ball back, you are in trouble because they will they will break inside. So the balance is right. If you play a team, even with a winger iron wide, to make sure that your back four is not sliding across too much, you have players inside. And more importantly, Jamie, you played with two guys like that. Even if you were in trouble, you play long on Emileski, he flicks it for Owen. The ball was here, you're in trouble. When you play with one striker, and I mentioned it before, against two or against three, he has to hold it. So, Thierry, we're talking about the system here. He's a coach that you admire, but the big thing that stands out for me is that you seem as if you're really set on having two strikers. Yes. Now, whatever comes behind that, whether it's uh, a four, diamond two, whatever it may be, a four, four, two. You know, you know, what is it? Because we don't see many teams now, certainly in the last, say, five, 10, 15 years, having two strikers right up front. Do you think it's coming back into fashion? I think it is coming back. And Madrid is top of the league in La Liga, playing with two, Rodrigo and Vinicius Junior, and we all know the big man, Jude Bellingham, behind. Inter Milan is playing with two, and I think they won tonight. They're 15 points ahead. In, uh, in Italy, playing like that. But I do understand when managers think that, OK, you play with two, but we're going to be outnumbered or when we're going to slide across is not going to be an easy one. 
but Inzaghi, the way he set up his team. And I, I invite everyone again to watch the final against Man City. That tactic was on point. Are you t you, you're, again, I just want to go back to the two up front. Are you talking about the two up front as in you and Dennis Bergkamp, where one's up front, one's coming short, or you're talking about two actual strikers right up the top end of the pitch? Well, it depends how you want to play it because you, you have to be cautious. Like I mentioned before, those guys usually that will be that will be their, their starting line. I mean, if I put it back here, this is how Milan will almost Inter Milan, sorry, will will almost defend. They're very passive in a certain way, but as soon as you pass that ball here, they will start to jump and make sure that they force you to play inside to make sure that they can counter. Lautaro Martinez will drop, drop sorry, and Marcus Thuram will make the runs. But for example, if I flip it to me, you also have to understand. What team you have, who do you have in your generation, under 21? I'm playing a 4-3-1-2 at the minute with the under, 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 under uh, 21. But let me take you back to the, the, the five, Terry. You've talked about five at the back. Uh -huh. You've talked about having three sixes. You've talked about a low block. These are all With things, a five, huh? Five. These okay. are all things that I probably didn't expect to hear from one of the league's most attacking players that we've ever seen. No, it, you, you, look... It, if you want to be on the ball, because you can be on the ball in any system, because we always put a system here. But ultimately, let's all be honest, it is what you do off and on the ball. Because people always say that City play in the 4-3-3. Yeah. Well, they don't. They not defend in, in the 4-4-2 at times. And when they're on the ball, they're never in a 4-3-3. It's a 3-7 at times. It's a 3-2-5, it's, it's whatever it is. But it doesn't look like a 4-3-3. Your shape changes when you are on the ball. And you, best example, Jamie mentioned it before. So, yes, what you need to look at is the balance. You're playing against a team that's going to play high and wide. So you play against a team that's going to play high and wide. Your back five suddenly is there. Right? So when those guys now are going to put pressure, now your strikers need to come and help you on their holding midfielders to make sure that that ball is going to go back only there. I mean, you can't, I can't only think about what's happening there. You have to think about the overview. You have assistance also that's going to help you. But to go back to my point and why I went to the 4-3-1-2 uh, uh, with the under-21 is because sometimes you come, you assess a generation. Do you have wingers? No, not a lot. Do you have a lot of strikers? Yes, you do. You have good tens? Yes. So that already forces you mm. to go a certain way. So at times you also need to adapt to what you have, especially when a, uh, a coach arrives with a team. You need to see what you have. But I think the 5-3-2 right now of uh, Inzaghi is not an easy one to open up. I just, I just want to say one last thing. I mean, I've been working with Thierry now for about the last couple of years, and uh, I watch a lot of football. And there's not many people who do watch as much football as me, but Thierry, I know how passionate you are about coaching and management. and. Obviously, you've got the French under-21 job now, and, and hopefully in the future you go on to manage in the Premier League or wherever it may be, but your knowledge of players and understanding of the game in terms of the games that you watch, I haven't seen a player of... When I say, he, he keeps saying our generation, so the players we played against, whatever. We all love football, some watch more than others, but... There's very few watch more than me, and he's one of them. <laughs> so whenever he's on, I'm listening. It, it, no, That's what, saying something. I know how much he watches. No, look, I, I, I since I, this is this is exactly a good a good position. Since I've passed on the other side of, of, <laughs> yes, of, of, the, line. of the line, yeah, I understood and I understand obviously what it is to be a coach, and this is why I talked about Wilder earlier, not going into a back five. This is just not me disrespecting him. This is something that I will think about the, the sliding thing. It, it, it's, it's less confusing to play against Arsenal. But it is so hard to be a coach. You take everything. Everything is on you. And who cares about the coach? You don't think about the coach. You don't. You go to see the coach to, to pass on to your problem and mentally and stuff. And we go back to the same thing. Tohol stops. Uh, Xavi stops. Klopp is stopping. Pep took a sabbatical year. If those guys reaches this type of situation at a big club, just let just let let's imagine what it is to be a coach at a lower level. And I'm thinking about everybody that is suffering. It's it's, it's mentally, it is not easy because nobody, technically and usually cares about what's going through the mind of a coach. Have you enjoyed your time as a coach up until now? 
Yes, yes, because I'll tell you something. Uh, my, my first experience at Monaco, we, we can talk about it. I can come here and find excuses. Bottom line, I didn't perform. That's, that's how it is. People can tell me, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, I learned. I learned. And, and people can say, oh, are you going to accept job? I went to Montreal to coach. It's not like I went to Montreal, no disrespect to nobody, but I went out there. And we all know why I came back, because I didn't see my kids for a very long time uh, during, during COVID time. I'm taking down the 21. I just, I just, I just love the, that interaction with the players. I'll be honest with you, uh, Jamie, for me, not, not only explain to them what it is, but what it is also to be a professional, what's coming your way, how you need to behave, how you need to perform, and, and how you need to see the game. Uh, so many times I, I, I said that to those guys, you know, I, people always, always, always ask me, what is greatness? For me, is how, how consistent you're going to be throughout your career. That's greatness for me. Time to say goodnight. We wish you well, Thierry. Thank you. And, I appreciate um, it. We'll be following the journey. I wish we had the, the other team, so we, we, could could have done, we could have done more. I wanted to know where you were putting Jamie I'm in that team as well. Jamie on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was where you played five at the back. <laughs> to get him in. I don't know if he can play. He has a spot. He has a spot. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs>